Welcome to another Recall by Data IQ video. If you're not familiar with me, my name is Kenji, and I'm the head of data science at a sports analytics consulting firm. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Joe Reese. So Joe Reese is the founder of Ternary Data. He's also the author of the Fundamentals of Data Engineering textbook, which is a bestseller this year. So Joe, welcome to uh, our little conversation. Hey, thanks again. Good to see you again. Great to see you again as well. Likewise. So, to kick things off, I'm really interested in your experience with data engineering. You know, how has data engineering maybe changed over the last 10 years? Uh, geez, 10 years ago, that would have been 2013, I guess. Pretty good at math. Um, so what's changed? Well, I, I, I think 10 years ago, the um, even the term data engineering didn't exist. And so, um, you know, I, I think it, the, the practice of it existed to the extent that people were, um, you know, uh, you know, building and maintaining and, and you know, evolving uh, data infrastructure, um, you know, such as uh, databases, data warehouses, data pipelines, um, you know, event streaming, and so forth. Uh, what's changed over the last ten years, I would say, is the, the practice has become a lot more um, solidified. Uh, you know, techniques have um, you know evolved and become standardized. And as well, what the big thing that really happened was the uh, um, democratization of um, I guess the, more, the wider availability of uh, awesome data tooling, whereas 10 years ago, uh, you know, the, the cloud was, um, you know, I, w I would say underway of getting adopted, but nowhere near where it is now. Uh, in much the same way, um, you know, back in the day, you really didn't have a lot of um, SaaS data products. You know, that I, I think now if you fast forward, just the job of doing almost anything with data has been greatly, greatly simplified. So that's the big change. So, so in terms of being simplified, how would you describe what maybe a normal data engineer does on a day-to-day -day now? Um, yeah, I mean, a, a typical data engineer would be managing this, what, what you know, we called in the book the uh, data engineering life cycle, right? So that's um, maybe getting data from source systems, uh, doing something with it, you know, storing it and serving it for downstream use cases like uh, maybe analytics or data science use cases um, or data sharing and, and so forth. And so, uh, you know, it would definitely vary by the type of company you're at and, and you know, what your job is. I would say you may be at a startup, for example, you know, there's probably gonna be more of a kind of a full stack expectation that you're doing you know, a bit of everything. Whereas if you're at a, um, you know, a large, you know, one of the big tech companies, for example, you're probably focusing on like a very specific part of the infrastructure and that's what you're, um, you know, hyper-focused on. And so. But yeah, it, it depends. But I think at the end of the day, the notion of, um, you know, kind of data lifecycle management is, um, you know, to, with the goal of supporting, um, you know, downstream use cases. I think that that's really the essence of data engineering, you know, no matter where you are. So. so in supporting downstream use cases, how do data engineers interface with the rest of the team? Let's say a data scientist or maybe a machine learning engineer. Um, so a data engineer would interface with, say, a data scientist in, in that the data engineer is really um, responsible for a data scientist success, you know, to a large degree. So there's the old statistic that, uh, you know, data scientists spend 80, 90 percent of their time getting data, cleaning it and you know, processing it and so forth. And maybe, you know, the remaining amount of time doing what, you know, data science-y stuff, right? So maybe model building, uh, exploratory data analysis and so forth. Really, a data engineer should flip that on its head so that the um, data scientists should probably spend at least, you know, 90% of their time doing what they've been professionally trained to do versus, you know, the uh, the stuff that, you know, they, they might tolerate, but, you know, it's in order to do their jobs. And so, so a data engineer, the way they interface with the data scientist is really, again, flipping that funnel back. So the data engineer really focuses on getting the data, preparing it, making it useful and serving it to a data scientist. So in that sense, do you believe that data engineers are a prerequisite to data scientists or, you know, what is the order of operations there? I would definitely say that the data engineering life cycle is prerequisite to, um, uh, to data science, right? And so, again, the life cycle is, you know, getting data from source systems, um, you know, ingesting it, storing it, transforming it, and making it useful, integrating it into to various um, other data sets and so forth. Um, I think that that's, Something either a, maybe a data scientist might do if they if they don't have the uh, resources to have a if the company doesn't have the resources to have a data engineer, but 
um, you know, the data engineering practice should fulfill that obligation. But ideally, a data engineer would do that instead of a data scientist. So who do you see becoming data engineers? Are, is it people who are specifically trained for data engineering? Or is it maybe data scientists coming in or software engineering or software engineers coming in? What, what is the path that you see that's fairly common? Uh, it's either software engineers becoming uh, data engineers. I'm seeing that. I'm also seeing you know a lot of data scientists um, going into data engineering. I think that depending on your um, you know your temperament and um, you know kind of what you like to do, maybe data engineering is something that you know kind of clicks with you as a data scientist. That was my uh, you know entry point into um, uh, you know data engineering. Actually, I had to do it because it, I couldn't get my job done otherwise, and so it's, you know and I kept noticing that it seemed like a very, it was a very foundational thing, um, you know. Uh, uh, no matter what you're trying to do with data, whether it's analytics or uh, you know machine learning or whatever, like if you didn't have the data and the foundation to get to reliably get data, um, you know most of your job is spent trying to figure that part out instead of doing the model building and all the things that you probably want to be doing. So yeah, it seems like that's a fairly common path where you know data scientists are these problem solvers, mm -hmm. and if you run into this problem that is upstream, you go until you fix it, and usually it ends with not having high quality data. It happens a lot. And, 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 and you know, and it's the, the, the crux of it really is that data scientists aren't really trained in this stuff, right? They're, they're trained in, um, you know, the, maybe it's practices of statistics, for example, or, um, um, you know, building machine learning models and analytics and so forth. But data engineering is, now you're expecting a data scientist to figure out, okay, so I got to understand, um, let me see how to write software, which is a separate discipline from writing like, you know, Jupyter notebook scripts, for example. Um, you know, and, and building systems and, and reconciling like, okay, so how do I handle distributed data, for example, and all this, you know, there's just a lot of other things you have to think about that, um, you know, imposes just a lot of extra work on data scientists, I would say. And so, and so we're, you know, from where it is now, where do you see data engineering going? Like, what are the trends that you see coming up in the future here? Um, I mean, there's a few of them. Uh, I think that, you know, obviously data engineering is, it reminds me a lot of where data science was about 10 years ago, actually. Uh, you know, I, I see, you know, the su success of our book, for example, The Fundamentals of Data Engineering, I think really speaks to that. Um, there's a lot of interest in data engineering right now. So I think the field itself is going to keep continue growing. Um, you know, I, I think that that's, uh, that's already happening. You know, the interest we're getting um, is quite massive. And the, the number of data engineering job postings, for example, they see they keep growing. Uh, so that's cool to see. I think, you know, from a trend standpoint, as it relates to data engineering, I think that there's a few things happening. I think, you know, what I foresee happening is moving from over a batch oriented world where, you, you know, you get data on a certain frequency or kind of a set schedule, um, you know, to kind of more real time data. I think that's a that's gonna be more of a thing in the next few years. Um, you know, the intersection of uh, machine learning ops, ML ops, and ML engineering with data engineering is also something I'm interested to see how that plays out. I, I don't quite know how that shapes up yet. Then it's also interesting because there's a movement towards shifting left back towards um, source systems and uh, applications. Uh, and so I, I guess I see a scenario where data engineers and software engineers, uh, you know, become kind of more of the same person in some ways because every application is now basically a data application. And so when you have that happening, it, it I think presents um, you know some pretty interesting uh, twists because we're so used to sort of a uh, chain of custody where people write software and then they, they kind of lob it over the wall to the data people, but I think that wall is going to come down right? and I and I foresee a situation where um, you know because data again is becoming so front and center to every uh, product, you know data powered products and so forth are going to be um, I think much more common, and with that, just the practices of data engineering are going to kind of spill into with ML engineering and software engineering to the point where I, I, I could see these roles fusing in some ways. And, and, you know, if you extend it out even further to maybe the vision of what data mesh hopes to provide, I mean, data mesh, you know, could arguably mean that everyone in a, in a uh, you know, a data product team, you know, becomes data product developers and, um, you know, then it's just, you know, everyone kind of has the skill sets of, uh, you know, creating products that maybe do machine learning or, you know, uh, analytics and so forth. So it, it raises me see. I think we're in an exciting period in the industry, though, where there's a, a lot of inflection points um, simultaneously occurring. So yeah, I, th I think a big overarching concept that you're describing there is is transparency. 
Yep. And being able to, to create these seamless transitions between data engineers, data scientists, and ML engineers. And that's something that I think Data IQ does really well. Right. You know, so they have essentially intake interfaces for the data coming in. There's transparency along the whole pipeline for data scientists, data engineers, machine learning engineers right. to be able to go in and see what's going on. Also to build dashboards to actually see everything as a part of this process. And mm -hmm. I think that that's something that is sort of more, you know, on the cutting edge of, of what's available when right. we're merging these disciplines. And I'm really excited to see where that goes as well. I'm, same way, right? It, it's it, the movement towards simplification of tools. Um, and, and I guess, as you call it, transparency is something where it's going to open up a lot of opportunities, uh, you know, to get more value out of your data. And it's exciting to see where this goes. So, so what, what should companies know about uh, their data infrastructure in the future? Obviously, we're talking a little bit about trends over, you know, in the overarching industry, but companies tend to lag a little bit behind what the, the sure. cutting edge trends are. Yeah, and that's understandable, right? If you're if you're always on the cutting edge of things, it would be a question of what are you, what are you getting done as well. So, um, I, I think the things that companies should know is, is keep it simple, right? Don't try and reinvent the wheel. So. There's a lot of great products out there right now that you can get off the shelf as well that'll, um, you know, help you probably. So I, what I would say is like leverage technologies that are off the shelf that have a lot of traction and, uh, you know, have a lot of support behind them. Right. So products like Data IQ, for example, um, you know, lots of people working on the product. And if you were to try and build that yourself, that would probably be a lot of work. So, you know, leverage the expertise of uh, people who do this full time. Yeah, I mean, there, there's such a, a premium on having scalable infrastructure. You mm -hmm. know, if you're working, for example, with a startup, a lot of startups create unbelievably innovative products. True. But if there's lack of support, if you're too deeply ingrained in that infrastructure, and then you have to change, you might have some problems with migration, right. especially if all of your infrastructure is, is built on that. Oh, absolutely. And, and it's interesting to see. I mean, we see a lot of, you know, infrastructure being built, but the startups are you know, essentially get bought and then you might yeah. be doing something, something completely Well, that's different. where you got to evaluate too. It, you know, as we always advise companies, like focus on writing software where it relates to your core competency as a company, right? With like things like data pipelines, you know, um, like I would say probably 80, 90% of the things that you do or require uh, should be off the shelf actually. And that, you know, 10, 20% really should be dedicated to um, doing what, really drives your business forward. Things like data pipelines, for example, that, that's been done a million times. You really don't need to reinvent the wheel on that. There's plenty of companies that do this. And that, that's something that's changed over, over time, correct? I mean, oh, sure. maybe 10 years ago, companies didn't have the exact tools off the shelf that they needed. And now it's a lot more accessible to everyone. It's way more accessible now. Yeah, I mean, there's a tool for everything right now. So is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, it depends. I, I think that it's like right now, we're going to see a lot of consolidation of tools and practices because I, I, so it's a question of really whether or not the tool is actually a feature, right? So that's that's a central question behind a lot of these um, the proliferation of tools is whether or not this is um, you know something that is uh, needed versus a nice to have. Amazing! Thank you so much, Joe. This is awesome. Yeah, thanks. Man. Yeah, of course. Thank you. You can learn more about Joe in the description below. We've linked to his LinkedIn as well as his book. You can also learn more about data engineering in some of the other Recall by Data IQ videos. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.